Today, we're going to be adding client-side interactivity to a Rails application without writing a single line of custom JavaScript. We're going to be doing this with the help of Turbo Frames and Turbo Streams. Let's jump right into it. I have a journaling application here, and I want to allow users to tag their journal entries. I have this multi-select here in the form, but I don't have any way to let the user create new tags. I want the user to be able to manage their tags without having to go to another page or lose the context of the journal entry they're creating. This is a great use case for Turbo. So the first thing we're gonna do here is wrap this field in a Turbo Frame tag and give it an ID, which we'll call tags frame. We'll then add a link that the user can visit when they wanna manage their tags. We'll go ahead and create a controller for managing the tags. We'll then update our routes file to add tags as a nested resource under journals. We'll make use of all the standard RESTful routes except for the show route. Now let's begin to implement our tags controller. We'll use a device helper method to ensure the user is authenticated. Then we'll set the journal instance variable. And for now, we'll just focus on our index route, where we'll set the tags as all the journal's tags. Now we'll create the view for the index route. Now recall, we want to swap out the contents nested within this turbo frame. So we'll nest the contents of our index route within a turbo frame with the same ID. For now, we'll just have a heading and a link back to the new journal entry path. Now you can see we can toggle between the two routes in line without a page reload that is the magic of turbo frames. Let's add a list of all the tags in a journal. We'll create a new partial for each individual tag, which for now will simply be the tag name in a list element. Since we don't yet have a way to create new tags with the UI, we'll use the Rails console to create a couple new tags to see what this list looks like. Now let's add the ability to create new tags from the UI. We'll start by creating a new action in the tags controller. In our index route, instead of rendering a form directly, we'll add another turbo frame tag here, giving it an ID of new tag, and we'll eager load the contents of the new route by providing a source parameter and giving it the new journal tag path. We'll create a view for the new action. And just like before, we'll wrap the contents of this new view within a turbo tag with that same ID. And let's go ahead and create a partial for that form. There's nothing too fancy going on here. It's just gonna be a standard form that takes the name of the tag, displays any errors if there are any, and the button to submit it. We'll go back to our tags controller and implement our create action. After we save the tag to the database, we are going to issue a turbo stream. When we create a new tag, we want to append the new tag to this unordered list without a full page turn. We'll accomplish this by targeting this DOM element by ID, which we're naming tags list. We're also gonna want a way to manipulate this form, so we're also gonna give this an ID. And in the case of a new tag, this helper method DOM ID is going to resolve to form tag. Create a new view to define the behavior of this turbo stream. The name of this file directly corresponds to the controller action. If there are any errors on this tag object, we will replace the DOM element with ID form tag. And we're simply replacing that form element with a new form that has the tag with the errors bound to it. If there are no errors, it means we've saved the tag. So we'll append the new tag to the DOM element with the ID tags list. We are appending a new tag partial with the new tag. We could also go ahead and replace the form object with a new form, giving it a brand new tag, effectively clearing the input. So let's go ahead and test this on the right side. We'll create a new tag. You can see the new tag has been appended to the end of the list. We'll add a server validation to ensure the name exists before the tag is created. And now we see a error message is displayed without a full page turn. Now let's add the ability to edit and delete tags. I know when I edit this tag, I'm gonna use turbo streams to replace this 
list element. So I'm gonna add an ID so that I can target it. Now I'll update the markup to give the user an option to either edit the tag or delete it. Now in order to swap the contents of this list element when the edit link is clicked, we'll need to wrap this content in a turbo frame. And we'll provide a shorthand to get the DOM ID for this tag. So we'll go back to our tags controller to set up our edit and update actions. We'll set up a helper method to set the tag from the ID in the URL. Then we'll set up our edit action, which we don't need anything else for. And then we'll set up our update action. For this, we'll simply update the tag via the tag params and issue a turbo stream. And then just like before, we'll create a new view to define the behavior of the update turbo stream. If there are any errors, we'll replace the form. Otherwise, we'll replace the list element corresponding to that tag. We'll set up the view for the edit route, which will simply be the form wrapped in a turbo frame. Now we can go in and edit these tags in line. Now let's add the ability to delete tags. We'll simply call destroy and you guessed it, we'll issue a turbo stream. Let's not forget to set the tag before this action. Once again, we'll create the view defining the behavior of the turbo stream on the destroy action. We'll simply remove the list element corresponding to that tag. Now when we delete a tag, the corresponding list element is removed without a full page turn. And that is the magic of turbo frames and turbo streams and how they can help you write interactive Rails applications without the need for a lot of custom JavaScript. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.